The Obama administration is expected to shift into public relations mode this week. With healthcare.gov, as they say, in the hands of digital experts, we're told the White House is now preparing to launch a major campaign to get more people to sign up overall. Well, they got to get going because the deadline to sign up to get coverage for January 1st is December 23rd. Those penalties kick in, too, for all those who are still uninsured in about four months. Let's bring in our political insiders, John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman from New York, Pat Cadell, a former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor, and Doug Schoen, former pollster for Bill Clinton, president and Fox News contributor as well. You know, you all can also weigh in on Twitter, at FN Insiders and at Harris Faulkner. Doug, big PR campaign. Yes. What likely is coming? Basically, that things are improving steadily, that you can sign up easily, that you will get insurance that will be affordable, arguably better than what you've had before, and that the problems with the system have uh, largely been addressed, and that, uh, bottom line, Harris, we are heading towards the realization of the goals of uh, the ACA. Whether that will be the reality remains to be seen, but that's what the campaign will say. You know, I, I'm curious because it's not as though we haven't seen any sort of a push. In fact, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, a former advisor for the president, I want to take a look at something he said today, which simply was, well, we just haven't seen the PR campaign yet. Let's watch that and then I'll get your response. No one has launched a big PR campaign to get these people signed up because of the problems with the federal website. We are about to launch a big PR campaign, and that, I think, is going to persuade a lot of people I, to I sign up. Pat, I'm confused. I, I mean, people have seen billboards. We've seen a campaign. We've seen speech we after just, speech look, from the president. Ever since, and Doug and I wrote about this right after it passed and got hammered, and we were right for months. They keep saying, oh, people like it the more they hear about it. We've heard about all these PR campaigns. And what we have is Mr. Zeke, is Mr. Emanuel there, Rahm Emanuel's brother, out there doing what he does best, which is telling the American people he knows what's good for them. They're too stupid to figure it out. And wait till we, and, and you know, we have a right to say whatever we want to you because after all, we're the good people. And the result is this is not just a pro problem of what is going to happen, it's also perception. They've lost the perception war. Let's put up some numbers, and John, I want to get your thought on this, too. Uh, when you look at young people, we, we know that they have to sign up to be the funding engine for Obamacare. Look at this from Harvard, this latest poll. 45% poll said that they are unlikely to enroll. What kind of PR campaign do they need to get those 45% back? Well, they're not stupid, these young people. They voted for Obama. Some of them voted to reelect them, but they've realized now that they've been sold a pig in a poke, right? The economy's not getting better for them. They're not getting jobs. That's why they have to have their parents' health care plan to cover them. They're discouraged over the whole thing. They're down on both parties. They're unhappy. It's, it's the symptom of what's happening in America is reflected in those young people. All right. We have a little bit of the president at a youth summit from this past week hitting on, I guess this was maybe the beginning of the PR campaign. Let's watch that. And then I have a tweet I want to share. Sure. If you're a student body president, set up a conference on campus. Uh, if you work at a nonprofit, uh, open your doors and use your email list to help people learn the facts. If you've got a radio show, spread the word on air. If you're a bartender, have a happy hour. Doug. Bartender, really? Well, look, this reflects, and I dare say, Pat, I think you'd agree with this, desperation by the president. Because bottom line, if young people don't sign up, if there are only 22 or 25 percent of them uh, who sign up, it means that the Affordable Care Act's economics don't work there isn't the resources to sustain the plan. So the president has got to get everybody involved. And that speech, I, Harris, I just think well, he's I, just tilting at windmills. Uh, all right, so then we would just call it the CA, the CARE Act. We take out the affordable part. Unaffordable part. CARE Act. Oh, right. Beyond affordable, okay. CA. This is, you know, he appeared with those young people, they, they claim the White House did, who were helped by Obamacare, but they wouldn't disclose who they were. So <laughs> that this was, you know, another one of these phony things. The president's out there sounding like a pitch man on, oh, you know, at 11 o'clock doing Does he have anybody else to help him besides a former advisor, Dr. Emanuel? Well, whatever He's ads, whatever. Phil Scalero back. 
who was his congressional liaison. He was living a peaceful life in New Mexico. He's back for three months to aid the administration. Harris, they're desperate. Well, and again, that's the timing, because in four months, the penalties kick in, because right. if you don't have health care, you're going to have to pay that. We already know Dr. Emanuel, not to the contrary, saying, well, in California, it's not him. No, 20% or less in California, where the exchange, where we can see the numbers, are less. So the, it's consistent. Uh, so it's consistent. We're, the young people aren't, as Doug said, they aren't stupid. The, and the politics that's going on here that we're not yet talking about is Democratic panic about 2014. That's what I'm saying. Where is everybody else who could help him? Well, sell they it? are scared of death, and they've told they, the they're house. running. They've told the White House, get this thing straightened out, or we're going to lose the Senate and lose more seats in the House. And the Republicans will then eviscerate this thing when they right. have control of We've Congress. We've got a lot of people chiming in on Twitter, and we specifically reached out to the millennials, and here's what we're finding out. Julie M. 987 says, uh, Harris, Fox News Insiders, what would it take? I would need reassurance that my personal information could not fall into the hands ah, of Internet you hackers. Go. You want to know what a PR campaign ah, should have? Yes. That's Excuse what Julie me. says. Remember, the, it was the, the Obama's loss with, with millennials, young voters, started with the NSA scandal. They're the most sophisticated. You're being asked to go on a website in which you have no security, in which everyone in the world is hacking, and, is, and still doesn't work at the back end. No wonder they'd be out of their minds to do this. Pay the fine. You know, one more. Can we just roll that one other from the President's Youth Summit, too? I mean, just in, ter in terms of trying to target this, see if this would work. He's, he tried it this way. I do remember what it's like being 27 or 28. And uh, aside from the occasional basketball injury, uh, you know, most of the time I kind of felt like I had nothing to worry about. Of course, that's what most people think until they have something to worry about. I, I don't. I think that's called pandering. I, I find yes. these two clips from the yeah. president remind me of the awkwardness of Richard Nixon trying to talk to crowds like he was one of them. And yeah, but never, this is the president's base. But he's not connecting. He's no, awkward. And, and here's the thing: if it were, if the media wasn't just rolling over with their paws up in the air, and we're actually covering how <laughs> bad he was. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We are asking tough questions. Well, well no, 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 I'm, I'm, mainstream. I'm talking about the people whose basic media. job in life they determine. That's quite a visual to... on their back with their well, paws there they are. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. <laughs> they're they're lap did, dogs. They're lap yeah. dogs, and they're, and they're waiting to get him, have him rub their stomach. If they were covering <laughs> him the way he ought to be covered on this, the way they would cover any other president, Pat, he would be destroyed. Have you noticed the scandals have disappeared? Oh, of course. The yeah. NSA, well, the That's the Republicans' fault, too. Well, it is the Republicans. Well, the website helped push some some of that language it out did. anyway because all right well I want to move on to the next topic real quickly when you talk about reaching that younger generation you heard the president talk about the minimum wage and that's kind of a toss out of the playbook from the Republican it's, Party because they were talking about raising the minimum wage. Well they're wage. only talking about it in a response to a uh, push in the Congress to do it now what none of them in either party and we the three of us keep bringing it up here with you which is Instead of worrying about the minimum wage, why aren't we talking about growing the economy to create more jobs that pay better? Because this jobs report on Friday was not very good. I mean, 200,000. the numbers, if you believe Well, the Pat, there is a history of faking the numbers, we think. And where is that investigation going? I didn't mean to interrupt but you. But bottom day. line, <laughs> Harris, we do not have from either party and certainly from the White House, an economic plan. There's no tax reform. There's no plan for economic growth. There's no plan for empowerment. Bottom line, the White House is talking redistribution. The Republicans are talking no. And the American people are sitting there saying, and, what's in it for us? And Doug, if you're a 25-year-old, right? You're pay if you have a job, you're paying tax to pay for Social Security that you don't believe you'll ever collect a penny of. Mm -hmm. You're now paying into a health care system for other people's health care that you don't think you need. You're paying for Medicare, Medicaid. Mm. Uh, no wonder I'm they feel I'm hopeless. I'm seeing a lot of that on Twitter. And if I could just steal one, too, from my, my Twitter page. Uh, this gentleman calls himself Straw Man. He says, forget Obama. Can America reverse downward spiral? GOP, DNC, both focused on winning at the expense of the United ah, States. That is a welcome to America. That's what most people in America think. And today, I got a quote from David Hume sent to me by someone from Fox, and it just said, a Republican and free government would be an obvious absurdity if the 
particular checks and controls provided by the Constitution had no real influence for the public good. And that is what we have now. This is what we, we have two parties who they care only about their temporary political advantage and the country be damned. And the American people, guess what? They, they figure this it. out. They know I, I'm it. wondering what people outside this country think of, and that's where I want to go they, next. They okay. Laugh. All right. We are back with the political insiders, and I want to jump right into this deal with Iran and the focus that we got into today with Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's prime minister, saying, hey, wait a minute. They talked about genocide against us. You cannot do this deal. Doug. Well, that's right. And this deal... I'm paraphrasing, by the way, the, This deal basically ratifies something the U.N. has it, which is the Iranians' right to enrich uranium. These are not people who are committed to our values. They're not honest. And bottom line, the inspection routine is not intrusive enough to guarantee our safety and security, and we don't even know where all their installations are. So Netanyahu, sadly, is correct. Pat, what is your greatest concern at this point as we go forward? Because this deal is not inked. Well, but my greatest it's concern temporary. is what we have done is basically assured they will enrich when they're ready, they will have nuclear weapons, and we have now created a monster when that happens because we have taken our influence off the table. This, this disaster, what I said two weeks ago, this mini Munich. I this, remember. This, this president who desperate for a deal for anything, can't wait to go over there. He, he is, we watch what the Chinese are doing in, you know, and the United States can't stand up to what they're doing in the, uh, in, the in the South China Seas, everywhere. Pat, this is a, I never, this I never a, thought, I never thought I'd be this afraid. who extends himself more for the Iranians than he does to the Republicans. Good point. Or anybody who are uh, allies. And, right, that's and true. more to the Iranians and more to radical Islamists than he does that's, to our allies. That's true. John, you were quiet. Why? Well, I mean, I, I've said this before. I don't trust John Kerry from my own experience. I don't you don't tr trust the Secretary of State? I do not trust him. I've dealt with him. And I do is not trust him. Is that a political him. difference that you have with him? Well, I don't think this agreement is an honest agreement. Tehran decides what sites get inspected. Can and you imagine this? You're letting someone decide, well, you can look here, but you can't look here. Well, what are you doing here that you're not telling us about? So why would you get into a deal like this? Because I, I don't think that you would the, call anybody said. in the administration, you know, silly or, or, or not trying. But, but why would they even because agree to this? Desperate, desperate, for, desperate for a deal. They don't want desperate, desperate for, for an agreement. After the disaster in Syria. Look, you have the same woman, Wendy Sherman, who negotiated the catastrophe with North Korea, handling the negotiation. What is it in this country? The more incompetent you are, the more you get to repeat it. And this administration is so desperate for any deal that they can get they will do, they will sell us they will sell the country out no matter what they don't mean to but that's what we, they're we doing we know that right. this base called Parchin in Iran is where they're weaponizing nuclear material and they not covered in the agreement not covered. no inspections they they did let the inspectors get into Iraq which right. was that that reactor that mm -hmm. everybody was worried about haven't had access to that in years right. so that was something that we got right but that's in the agreement that they're going to get to look at that and they're supposed to stop some of the building so that's going all. on there but for six but months. So not all. going to be built. Uh, all right, yeah. so I want to get deeper into your point of why sure. the president would be, in your words, desperate, maybe to another observer, eager to make any kind of a deal. Uh, you know, Pew, Pew Research Center, and you bring up a good point. Let's pop up some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. They did it topic by topic. We'll start domestically here now. The polling breaks down this way. Comparing January to November of this year, approval on health care has fallen to 37%. That's his issue, by the way. Yeah. His right. issue. Yeah. The president also losing ground on his handling of the threat of terrorism. The key number here is the jump in the disapproval rate of 44 percent. 44 percent of those say that he's not doing a good job at that. And just 34 percent of Americans and, approve and of the president's this, foreign policy. And that kind of gets us back into why he might be eager to make a that's, deal. That's what I was going to say. This is the key statistic. With only a third approving of his rating on foreign policy and a narrow majority approving of his rating on terrorism. Harris, he's desperate for a deal. Bottom line, this week we saw with Biden in Asia, he was unable to uh, persuade the Chinese to stand down in the East China Sea, unable to get Japan and Korea working together. Bottom line, the Obama administration needs a deal. That's why they're pushing. They, you know what, that's an interesting need, let me, point. Let me just say something. They, what they want is about 
it's all about appearance. It's not about substance or reality. Those numbers drive this president. It drove him when he talked you about. You think it. he looks at those numbers? Of course, oh that's God. all they do. That's all they do. They now you're a former pollster, so you're kind of the inside no, 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 on this. But I've never seen anything like the way they exercise the ability. If we're in trouble, we make up something. We go out and we talk about the you know income inequality, which I think is a real issue, is an excuse for your program. The foreign policy numbers, not only that, but remember, Pew also reports that there are record numbers of Americans saying that we have lost influence in the world and that we are right. less powerful than we've been. The depth on foreign policy disaster that the American people perceive of this president is staggering. But by Last the way, 10 it's seconds. not just Obama who reads these polls. Foreign governments read exactly. the polls and Congress reads these polls and once they view the president as weak in Beijing, they say, we're going to put up this no-fly zone and see and, what Obama's going to do about it. And that was the point I was going to say, because we threw a B-52. Two of them. Yeah. Threw right through. Right through that zone that China yeah. and, and Japan are and disputing. Right and, 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 and it's like it never happened. Right. i got to let you guys go, but I want and to talk more. Him, yeah. But here's the thing. <laughs> you can continue the conversation on Twitter tonight. These guys stay up late, yes, too. Yes, very late. Uh, with the political <laughs> insiders. And on our website every Monday morning at 1030 Eastern, that's live.foxnews.com. Have at it. Good to have you. Thank you. Nice Thank to have you house. back after the Please Thanksgiving holiday. Yes, happy, happy. Happy, happy. We'll toggle into news now. Police.